we can share knowledge and understanding and this is one thing I'm super grateful about with living in a van is you meet people who live in cool ones. This is an 80s vehicle. It is so sexy. I have air conditioning? Yeah. I want air conditioning. Oh, I made it. I made it to the I'm in a new place. I have drawings of electrical stuff. <laughs> Reverse polarity connection forbidden. I.e. you blow it up. A temperature sensed alternator. DIY kitchen style. It works. It works. It works. It works. And I'm going to have a bit of ability to switch between high current and low current. I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, getting up at 5 a.m. this morning to catch a ferry was, while worth it, not something I want to do on a regular basis. <gasps> Oh, 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 oh my gosh. That was such a stressful start to the trip. I just about panicked. My ignition barrel, I think, is on its last legs and it was like crunchy. I couldn't turn it. I'm ready to go. I was so flustered and what panicking that I'm so far north. Everything's okay. The van is running, full of gas. We're good. I filled up the oil. I did an oil check. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm going to get there. I'll update you soon. in a new place. I have drawings of electrical stuff. I am so excited. Um, this is a dear friend and Patreon of mine who you have seen before in previous videos, Grant. Da -da -da -da! <laughs> and he's drawn this amazing electrical diagram, which I'm going to show you, uh, for, uh, for the DC to DC charging for these very dusty batteries in here. Can you see that? I'm gonna get charged. Oh my gosh, look. So much dust. Are you, are you serious? Are you serious? This van is so shiny. I wouldn't like. Wow. Wow. That, that, that is just too cool. She needs a facelift. Excuse me, what is this? <laughs> this is like, I, I'm, I'm an electrician and I'm gonna put all of the things. <laughs> you just redid your dash basically, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, it used to be like a, a rusty metal one. Wow. So we you have air conditioning? Yeah. I want air conditioning. I was talking about this to my partner and was like, oh, so air conditioning would be really nice. It is really nice to have once in a while. But how much power, do, or is it it's obviously water? Yeah, it uses a lot of power. Um, that being said, when we're with the solar panels, if we're in full sun, then it's we can run it off the solar. Um, Look at this! This is the cute, this is the baby cousin. The baby, yeah. The baby cousin to my one. <laughs> nice! I'm just gonna sit here in this like air conditioned luxury. What? <laughs> And you have a beer tap in your van? That's just filtered water. Oh. But it is. A, it is. A <laughs> and a fancy sink. Yeah, sink. What? And then this is where our shower hooks up. Oh. We have our shower here, and then there's so a magnet that big. the head goes on. That's so clever. And then there's a drain here. A shower drain. Yep. So literally, 
Yeah, we have like a little... A wet, uh, you've got a wet room floor in your whole space, basically. Sort of. We have a little um, pet mat thing that we yeah. put down. So this is the... Oh, and this is like a bathtub head. thing. And then this is like a bathtub thing. This is like Here. next level showering. Just line the hole up with the drain. And then it all drains in the hole. Yep. And then the, the floor is all sloped. Yeah, I see that. Holy moly! Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your bed goes up and down yep. on pulleys, which is my goal too. But not, I probably don't know if I'm gonna mechanize it. Just yeah. Go ship style. Super handy. Yeah, it means give you all that garage space accessibility. Wow! <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna stand here in front of the air conditioner. <laughs> So cool. And what is this? Um, that's just a washer for the windows. Oh, nice. I didn't know where to put it, so I just put it there for it temporary. There. And it has stayed there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yes, we have some more electronics. <laughs> Very cool. What is what is this? Alarm system. Of course it's an alarm system. It's amazing. And it just looks so snazzy. Yeah, the only thing is it's... Um, noisy when you're driving. I never oh, really does it thought, rattle? I thought I could get all the rattles out, but I can't. I kind of gave up on that. It's really interesting being in step vans that have had the bulkhead removed. So my van has a bulkhead and I really actually really enjoy closing it off and having the privacy. But when it's when you're not needing to have the privacy, having it open and then just having it straight open to the outside is kind of lovely. Yeah. Well, our van's three feet or four feet shorter than yours. So. Oh yeah. yeah. So mine's 16 and a half from bulkhead to back right. feet yeah and then the total length is like 22 23 including the bumper 20 i have this debate every time i go on a ferry about how long the vehicle is so this is what in total length would be like 20 feet i think it's 19. 19. yeah oh it's a cute one <laughs> I mean, it's not that weird. There's some juniors. Have you seen the junior step yeah, vans? Yeah. The junior step vans are really cute. Anyway. He likes it too, so. Yeah, it makes it mess free rather than. Yeah. This is room. your door That's closing door and opening yeah. compressor. Yeah. <laughs> That's so amazing. Okay, you win. You win coolness. There's my little garage, an unmade bed. I feel so grateful to have folks in my life who can help me with my dreams and plans and the expertise that I can ask questions and I can learn and then sometime in the future I'll be able to help somebody else and I can make these videos, share what I've done and hopefully you all can find that helpful. It is really precious and important to me to like create community because we all have skills, we all have areas of expertise where we can share knowledge and understanding and this is one thing I'm super grateful about with living in a van is you meet people who live in cool ones. This is an 80s vehicle. It is so sexy. But yeah, training skills and knowledge is amazing. This is what we're planning to do. So then on off switch, but we're also going to have a switch here between charging at 60 amps or 30 amps so that I don't overheat or cook my alternator in summer. Isn't that pretty neat? Okay, I think the first thing first would be to dust slash blow out everything in here. So dusty! Some grounds to install, we've got some heavy cables, some switches, some fuses, and 
my DC to DC charger. I got shipped here because I have been on the road traveling for the last week and a half. And so there was no way that it was going to get delivered to me in time anywhere. Joys of being night nomadic is this post office issue, post postal address. Sometimes it's a thing. Wow. I cannot wait. Let's see if it fits. Switches for the dashboard. Cool. And cable for the switches. Amazing. What gauge is this? This is just for the um, control. Yeah. Yes, I do. How far up do they go? There we go. On, on, on. And the last one goes off. There we go. Ding, ding, ding. Done. Cool, sensor, D DC, LC, that's for the um, switches, mm -hmm. yeah, ins, inputs, <laughs> reverse polarity connection forbidden, i.e. you blow it up, output, great, so excited, but it's in there, down there, if you come stand where I am, and then look, through there. Oh yeah, I see it. There's the alternator. Oh yeah, we'll just take the uh, take that off. The intake, uh, the uh, air intake off here, and... which is very loosely attached anyway. I just took. Oh, I might need a new air filter. <laughs> if I take that off, and that off, mm -hmm. now we can get at the alternator. Look at me figuring shit out. Hi, engine. What do you see? <laughs> it's looking at a good way to run this wire. Uh-huh. We can read. Nice, nice. So yeah, they're gonna, they're just gonna come up here. We'll put the fuse somewhere over here. I'm just like, That's great. what is this thing? And is this hot? Because we want to keep it off of the side of the manifold. Try to wire all of this through without getting it to touch anything hot. It's very important. And I am officially filthy. <laughs> Noise. These are handy. Very handy. Keep those. There's an oven food temperature gauge with wow. that plugs in, and we're gonna strap that to the side of the alternator. Run it through the firewall up here with a little grommet, along with the switch cables. And I'm really excited about it because it's mainly for peak summer. I don't want to be drawing too much and overheating the alternator. Isn't this a great idea? Let's see where that is. Don't record it. No, don't record it. Okay, perfect. I'm lucky it didn't go any lower. One step. That looks pretty good. There we go. Look at that. I think that's gonna work. Great. Let's go see where it comes out in the bottom. I didn't fuck up. I got, didn't hit thing. Woohoo! There's a hole in the floor. It's snaking all the way through there, not touching anything hot, avoiding all of the tubes and wires and going through to the back. And then that will come up. Hole that I just drilled. If you've thought about buying wire cables, just buy jumper leads. You can get them off Amazon and they're the great gauges for cheap. How amazing! Um, I'm gonna pass on third hand credit to my friend Sam 
the letter B, always B moving. What a great idea! Wow! There's so much room under here I can sit up. <laughs> this is wild. Oh, it's bunched. No way. Wow. Got it. <laughs> Good job. Eh, plenty a little bit dirty, but you're dirtier. I think this is the main ground. These two things are very securely bolted. There's lots of wires in here, lots of little wires, and then one of these comes out right here. So I think from our hole here, we'll be able to bring wires down and have all of the system grounded to the same split spot. That's as much as I need. Oh, perfect. I think it's perfect Here's the next one. Yep. Good. Oh my gosh. All of it's through. We might need a new bolt because this is super, well, maybe not. Another one. It'll be all grounded finally. Yay. Oh. I don't think this was going to come out. Oh, I'll go get the spanners. Uh, oh no, they're right there. there. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> With this old beast here will get attached to this guy. Nice thick four gauge cut wire. These travel all the way to the back. Oh, I should put a um, thingy on, a, a lug on this. Yes. I was totally under the impression that something had to connect the alternator in here, but actually everything comes through from the battery. Um, the alternator will charge the battery, we take it off there. Yeah, it's good. It helps protect the alternator from overheating. It keeps the starter battery charged. Um, and we will install this, if you can see the whole shiny silver wire, that's a temperature sensor, so we can check that the alternator is not overheating. Learning new things every day. There are lots of different ways to wire in a DC to DC charger, and this is a, the way we're doing it. To the alternator. Look at her in all her glory. A temperature sensored alternator, DIY kitchen style. I don't know why that tickles my fancy the fact that the sunlight is just lighting it up. It's just extra funny. I think it's great. Yay! So cool. I learned how to take this off. This is so simple. Undoes. That goes in there. We'll clip in brackets in here. I figured it out. I figured it out myself. Yeah! I feel... <laughs> you just dance playing with fire just in case. Do, 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 do. covered this up again so that we're protecting ourselves before we attach this to this still not live because it's not attached at the other end yay it's the end of a long day everything is set up this is the sensor that needs to be wired in to connect to here that's what we're going to do yet the other end of this is not connected so this is not running yet but <coughs> other than some cable management we're good. Might plug this in for a little bit of juice, but not all the way so that we have some charging room to test this tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It is day two. We did so much yesterday. I'm really stoked. All the wiring is run from the engine bay through to the back. Now we are working on fuses battery connection, ignition wire, switches, the fiddly stuff where you want to be refreshed so you don't mess anything up. 
I'm excited. I'm so grateful to be able to be, have uh, Grant's amazing help. Um, this is going to change my life yet again. Whee! <laughs> oh yeah, that's got 150 amp fuse in it. And we're going to put an 80 amp fuse in the back. And a hundred at the front, or did I get that wrong way? Yeah, no, that's right. Lovely jubbly. So this has to go between this and the positive terminal, is that right? Yep. Good old hundred amp fuse. It's pretty, you can look at it, but we can take it off if we need to. I have an understanding of if I need to jump the front battery, say worst case scenario, this battery gets completely flat. I know how to connect the, ba the house batteries to the starter battery. Obviously they're two different battery types, not an ideal situation, but in an emergency, it's important to know. Oh, it didn't pop. Capacitors are charged. <laughs> okay. Can you explain that to me? What does it mean by capacitors are charged? Um, so in your charger, there's uh, capacitors that store energy. Yes. When you first connect it, uh, they have to fill up and they fill up quickly. Yeah. So you see a little spark when you first connect it. Ha! <laughs> it's normal. Sometimes that happens if I've disconnected this positive terminal, if I'm just putting it back on the battery, yeah, there same. must be a capacitor in the van too. Same thing, yeah. Huh. I did not know that. I was like, why is it sparking? <laughs> Cool, that's something I didn't know before. Oh, look at that pretty wiring. And we'll use this meter to test that the, how much current it's putting out. Fancy. Okay. So, this measures the amount of current yep. when you put it between here. Yeah, so this is a clamp on DC current meter. So okay. we can get a rough idea of how many amps we're pulling. Yeah. And if, if this thing's working. So I'm gonna just clamp it over the, negative wire which is on the output mm -hmm. going to your battery so this number will be what this is putting into your house batteries and then later we can also clamp it onto the um, starter side so we can see how much amps it's pulling from the starter so why did you put it over the black wire not the red wire it doesn't matter okay just because it was easier okay What's a so it's got four in there four in and it. it's shielded. Amazing. Okay, so we're gonna use one of those. We're gonna use two, one for the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ignition and the other for the uh, current limiting. Perfect. Yay. This was just our test wire to make sure it worked, which it does, yay. I'm future-proofing my electrical system. If I ever get more short-sighted, I've made these labels. Super huge. Connect the black wire to um, positive. We're gonna get. Uh, it's gonna turn this on, uh -huh. and it should output sixty, around sixty amps. Okay. But from what I've seen of these, it's usually fifty-five, okay. fifty-six, and then when we connect the white wire, it should cut that in half. Oh. So those, these are the two that are gonna go through this cable <laughs> up to your switches. Okay. So this should be half output to start with. This should be good because the van's not running anyways. All right, are ready? Ooh, I heard it turn on for a split second. There we go, 30, 28 amps, it's charging. Ooh. Okay, so now let's try the full amount. So I'll disconnect the current limiting. Yeah. And we'll do the full 60 amps. Forty-two, forty-one. Woo! Obviously, All right. we don't want to do it for too long, so we don't kill this yeah, exactly. battery. <laughs> so let's nice. Start it up and, and try it again. Engine is running. Let's see if it's gonna charge. What's oh, beeping? Ooh, you 56, can... 57. Oh, you can hear it working harder. Yeah. You heard the engine change. Hey? Yeah, I heard the engine change. <laughs> okay. 
So now it's putting out the full amount. It's charging the batteries. Woo! And if you press the little button on the inverter, just turn the screen on. 13.5, 13.6, it's charging the batteries. Amazing. Cool. Listening to the sound. Oh, yeah, you see this tinge of the engine sound? 28. Yeah. That sounds like it's going to be so much healthier for my engine just to do it like that. Mm. Not. Yeah, in the summertime, I think it's going to. Mandatory from kind of thing. What I've seen, it's going to heat up on the. I'm going to go check the temperature of the alternator now. Yeah. So, Lonnie says 27 degrees. Awesome. Well, let's leave it hooked up for a bit. Yeah. It works. It works. It works. It works. And I'm going to have a bit of ability to switch between high current and low current because there is a current limiter. You can hear the change in the engine sound when it starts charging or when it comes down to a lower voltage. Yeah, no, lower amperage. <laughs> Alternator current temperature says it's 49 degrees. Let's do a quality check. Can, we, can you show me? doing next we are connecting the switches to an, a port in here that is unused which will turn on and become active when the ignition is on and we're gonna put these very cute switches on the dash here when they look great or first if I mix it up there we go done Fixed. to help out future me I've labeled the wire it plugs into the fuse block and we have a little fuse that runs in here and then we'll connect it to these switches one will turn the DC to DC charger off and on and the other one will charge change it from pulling 60 amps or pulling 30 amps so nice protection you know what I don't know if there's enough cable space between the two this this is not long enough because I put a bigger space. Shit. Oh yeah, this is not live yet because we haven't plugged the other end into the ignition wire yet. Okay, and you tightened it with a tool. Oh, I'll get you a better tool for tight tightening them. Doesn't that look cute? It's gonna look like that. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, so exciting to be able to control my DC to DC charger from here and um control what voltage it's drawing is awesome because if this number was dropping then we would be able to tell that the alternator wasn't keeping up it's sort of dropping so this is at low voltage we're gonna change it all right that's 60 So it's 34 out here from and the then yeah. from the alternator and then 28 by the time it reaches the other end of the cable. Yeah. That's not too big a loss. This is what it, the alternator is drawing. If we have it on a 60 amp charging to get 55 at the other end of the cable, the rest is re losses to resistance for the length, length of the cable. Yeah. My mechanic recently che checked the uh, alternator and did a resistance test up to 90 amps. 
so I'm glad to be not pushing it too much more than that. But you can see that this would mean that it's not actually charging the battery. So if I want to keep the battery charged, I would switch it down to 30 and make sure this comes up. Ah, let me do that. voltage has come back up and it will keep, continue to increase this charge. Turning the whole thing off. Yeah, sorry. yeah the left switch is... Uh... There we go. And then it's continuing to top up charge this. By this point, after a crazy dive trip, a sprint down island, two long days of electrical work for which I'm internally grateful for the help, I was pretty exhausted. We did a few more electrical things, but I had completely run out of the steam to film. A huge thank you to Grant and Stevie for your hospitality, your laughs and your expertise. Thank you so, so much. Thanks again. Thank you. See ya. Thank I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I have been so grateful for getting this done. It is changing my life and living in this van. I can't wait to bring to you into the next episode, which will be something completely different. And good morning. I'm feeling it. It is five something in the morning. It was the only reservation that I could get to get the ferry from the mainland back to Vancouver Island. Um, if you don't have a reservation, you may as well not bother sometimes. And my body feels like it's spent two days outside breathing the smoke. There's been a huge fire in the, the Okanagan um, in Kelowna and we've been working outside for two days. That combined with my early morning and my body is tired and my throat is scratchy. But I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that I can now charge my batteries when I drive. It's such a big deal. Oh, but boy, will I be happy to get back to the island where things are slower, quieter, a little less noisy, a little less intense. Yeah. I'm not a city person. <laughs> oh dear. You know what? I'm incredibly grateful for the people who have come into my life because I've been doing YouTube, um, whether it's the Patreons I have, the people who contact me via email, people who offer their support, like, my channel is only little and yet I'm still so grateful for all the folks that have reached out and to the kind comments that every video gets. It's surreal. It's surreal, honestly. And I'm just... Maybe I'm half awake, but I'm like... Do I need to pinch myself? Anyway. Ferry. Back home. Vancouver Island feels more like home. I like being in the Gulf Islands. And there's still so much of that area to explore yet. And the smoke is a lot clearer on this side of the ocean. I'm glad to have gotten out of the big city. Feels nice to be back close to the ocean again. Over in this distance, there are mountains that I can see in the distance, which I don't think the camera can see. It's still very hazy looking that way. And the plane is in the haze a little bit. 
few more hours driving and I can relax and the trip will be done. What a journey. Oh, I'm going to go to bed and sleep for three days. I'm so tired. Uh, getting up at 5am this morning to catch a ferry was, while worth it, not something I want to do on a regular basis. Oh, okay, let's go. If you have any friends who might enjoy watching this video, please share this video with them. I appreciate the audience and community that gathers with me each week so much. You're changing my life and I hope I can share my excitement and adventures with you. Thanks so much for watching. A huge thank you to my Patreons who make doing this every week sustainable for me. I can't wait to read your comments and until next time, thank you so much for watching.